Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. Uh, this is my first video after my uh, after my abdominal surgery a couple weeks ago now. Um, so I've been laid up. Uh, this is day three back at the workbench. Uh, just kind of easing myself back into the work. So I really appreciate all of your patience, your prayers, and, uh, and flexibility with your order times and all that. So, all right guys, this is a really cool video. It's got a going to feature a sheath for a dark timber honey badger and piggybacking an SE Zula 2 with knife connection handle scales. These are actually both my knives, um, but the gentleman that ordered this, Robert is his name, he just bought an Zula 2 and ordered some of the gray and black, uh, so where you see blue it would be gray, uh, G10 scales from the knife connection for his Zula. So it's a really, really sweet setup. And uh, I don't know, I can't remember what colors he has on his uh, honey badger. Mine is black micarta with desert ironwood inserts there. So, uh, guys, if you haven't checked out the honey badger by Dark Timber, I'm sure most of you already know about this thing. It is just one of the sweetest knives. Uh, it's probably my all-time favorite knife uh, so far. But it's, it's such a sweet knife. It's beautiful. Nice, crisp, clean edges, just looks mean and aggressive, and uh, of course, CPM 3V, which is an amazing steel, so can't, you just can't beat it. So, all right, what he has asked for was a sort of a modular design, and I made it a little bit more modular by including some extra options in it that he didn't ask for. Um, we're going to go through it real quick. This is black basket weave with Cryptek Raid for all of the accents and accessories. In some spots I used the full size Raid, in some spots I used the Micro, uh, just to make sure that there was enough pattern on it. I don't always do that, but uh, I actually just happened to have a little bit of Micro Raid left over, so I thought, you know what, I should just use that up and uh, put those attachments on there and get all of that patterning on there because it looks so nice. So I'm going to try to adjust this light real quick. It's kind of... A little bit too much in my face. All right, so here we go. I think maybe you can see this a little bit better now too, I hope. All right, so what we have on it for attachments, we've got an Exotac fire rod here. Uh, we have an Olight SR1 baton two right here. And in case you're wondering, it is the same size as the, um, as the regular SR1 baton. Um, the only difference is the type of texturing on the uh, on the battery housing here, and then I believe the battery life is a little bit better, and the lumen uh, output is a little bit higher on the baton too. I could be wrong, but um, yeah, I own both, and I'm pretty sure this one's just slightly better, if I recall. All right. Uh, oh, it also has a magnetic charging tail cap capability, so you don't have to take the battery out and plug it in. You actually just put the tail cap. Uh, near the charging port and it just sucks right to it and starts charging so it's, it's pretty sweet um, We have an SE pouch here. This is the small SE pouch obviously in black It does come in OD green as well as Coyote Brown and it comes in a large and a small option I personally really like the small a little bit better um, Number one it fits better on most sheaths I think the large one is a little bit too big for a lot of knives but the second reason I like this one a lot is because it typically comes with an SE tin inside of it. And uh, I can't seem to figure out the rhyme or reason to it. Some tins come with like their survival tips and all that on the inside. And some just with the mounting hardware for the, uh, for the, uh, for the pouch itself. So I'm going to explain how that works in a second as well. In this tin there was nothing, but I'm including two lengths of shock cord that are the right length to tie on his Exotac fire rod. So both the light and the fire rod that you see here as well as both knives are mine. Uh, he just happened to have the same thing and he asked for uh, two Exotac fire rods, one that would just be a backup essentially, I think. And uh, so one of them is gonna be black like this and the other one's gonna be gunmetal gray. And I'm actually just gonna have them shipped to him directly from Amazon. So I'm sending him some shot cord as well so that he can tie that on uh, by himself uh, when the time comes. The reason that you need shock cord when you have a fire rod or a ferro rod of any kind is because over time that rod is going to be used and it's going to shrink so it will eventually become loose. This one is slightly used so I, I used a wooden dowel with the same diameter to form the loop 
but you can see if you shake it upside down that rod is going to pop out like you just saw so that one had been whittled down just a little bit so that that shock cord is really necessary what you do is you tie it around the little lanyard hole on it and then you put the rod in and slip the cord over the tip of the rod and it just self retains um, regardless of how narrow that rod becomes so all right as far as the carry system goes we have a leather dangler you can see that articulating dangler on the d-ring there as well as a thigh strap when you combine a thigh strap and a dangler this is called a drop leg setup this is one of my favorite ways to carry it's a really nice option uh, personally I don't really care for carrying um, dangler without a leg strap because I don't like the feeling of my sheath uh, sort of flopping around. But I don't also, I don't also, I, I also don't really care for having um, just a rigid drop loop. Um, so let me, yeah, hold on, let me back up. There, there's a little bit of terminology confusion going on. Um, there are two things that use the word drop. One of them is drop loop and the other one is drop leg. Uh, the difference is that a drop loop is basically the same thing as a dangler except you get rid of the D-ring. So it, it would be like the leather loop directly attached to the sheath. Or in some cases you'll see plastic you know, or Kydex or whatever people use to directly fix the belt loop to the sheath with no ability to swivel or articulate like this. Um, drop leg, however, means you've got some sort of loop up here, typically a dangler, as well as a thigh strap. Um, what this allows you to do is have a little bit of that freedom of motion. This is going to move with your thigh and your hips as you sit, as you run, as you move your legs, whatever. And it's also going to keep that knife perfectly in line with your thigh so that you'll always know exactly where it's at. It's never going to get snagged on something and kind of flop and trail behind you. It's never, you know, whatever. It stays nice and put firm right against your body. So that's a very nice, comfortable option. In my opinion, it is superior to just a single uh, dangler. But um, that's, just, that's just me. I really hate the feeling of the, the swinging motion. So, all right, that's what we got. Um, how I attach the... Um, the dangler, or sorry, the uh, the thigh strap here. I did it a little bit different from normal. You can see I've got two D rings on there. This D ring was no problem to attach because there are eyelets along the side of this sheath. But you can see this is a taco style sheath, meaning you have one piece folded over the spine of the knife, so there are no eyelets up here. That means I had to put a mounting plate on it to be able to mount this D ring adapter over here. Um, and you can see the attach points. I've got four different attach points. The plate is attached to the sheath and the D-rings are attached to the plate. So it's on there really, really rigid. Uh, you don't have to worry about that falling off. You snag, it's not going to break, whatever. It's really solid, really rugged. <clears throat> and then as far as the, the nylon goes, instead of doing... Um, usually I would do a single piece on each D-ring with a tri-glide and either the male or the female piece of this buckle system attached. So you'd have to unweave both of those through the D-ring, uh, you know, unweave the nylon through the tri-glide as well as the buckle to get it off of the D-ring. This one is a little bit simpler. It's a little bit freer moving, which I don't necessarily like, but it's really easy to take off, which I love. So you literally just open it up and then pull that male side through the, uh, the D-rings. It'll fit. All right, very, very easy, comfortable, convenient setup. And then the additional carry option that you don't see here, which uh, I think is really nice, is if you get yourself a shoulder strap, uh, get yourself like a two-point rifle sling that either has HK or duffel clips on it, and you'd be able to clip into this D-ring and this D-ring to give yourself what's called a baldric carry. So you'd slip your shoulder through, you'd have it carrying on your... On your dominant shoulder across your body hanging under your non-dominant arm um, and you'll be able to draw across your body like that that's a baldric setup really comfortable it's probably my favorite overall carry setup um, because when you have especially you know if you've got a bunch of accessories or larger heavier knives it is the most comfortable way to carry um, i think it's the safest way um, it just it just gives you so much freedom with your hands and it uh, doesn't matter what you're wearing, you don't require a belt, etc., etc. It's very, very comfortable to bear that kind of weight. So 
Um, this does have a built-in baldric carry option. You just need to supply the two-point rifle sling to make that work. Um, all right, last thing. Well, actually, hold on. One side note. If you do carry baldric, the position of the flashlight is intentional um, being facing outward like this because you could click that sucker on and while it's carrying under your arm, you have the ability to actually just have both hands at your disposal, be able to use your knives, whatever you need to do, and still illuminate the path in front of you. So it's really, really convenient. Um, I'm a huge fan of that. Been doing it for a little while. It was requested on a sheath probably a year and a half ago, and now every time I do a Baldrick setup that has a flashlight, that's just kind of the go-to. So it's just a good idea that works. Um, I'll attribute that to my, my good buddy BJ Hill, who had requested that specifically. All right, and then last thing, we've got the fit of the two knives. We'll do the Azula first. What a great knife. If you guys aren't already familiar, you, just, you need to get yourself an Azula. They're about 75 bucks, and then uh, another, uh, I think, 35 or 45 to get the uh, TKC handle scales. Uh, definitely not necessary to get the scales, but that much sweeter if you do. It's got a nice little click in. It's really solid in there. There's no rattle, no play. It's got a pretty smooth draw. Um, because we have that pouch on there, I wanted to make sure that the uh, the knife was pretty low profile just because start, things start to get really thick when you add a pouch. So the knife is really close to the sheath. I had it, I have it standing off just, just enough to be able to comfortably grip it with your fingers. Um, but it doesn't quite feel like a totally natural grip, so it might take a few tries, a few, uh, few draws to get used to how that feels. Um, so definitely play around with that a little bit and get used to it. And of course, we've got the Honey Badger. This thing has a nice smooth entry, very smooth draw. It's got a little bit of a click in. I think this thing came out really nice very smooth action in and out and uh yeah i'm really happy with how the sheath came out so all right guys before i ramble on anymore i'm just going to end the video so if you like this sheath if you like the video hit that like button if you like the channel subscribe let me know what you think of these two knives and this sheath setup boy like i said dark timber probably my favorite knife the honey badger it's just such it's such an awesome knife so comfortable in hand Check these things out and uh, let me know what you think down below. If you guys happen to have one, uh, definitely give me your thoughts. If you don't have one, give me your thoughts anyway. And uh, SE, of course, just legendary, uh, awesome company. So, all right, guys, like, share, comment, subscribe, and stick around for the next one. God bless.